All right. Well, I thought the game ended up like I thought it would, not in terms of who won and lost, but that one team was going to lose, and uh, it was going to be a tough loss no matter who lost or this game. You had two good teams in here playing. Um, thought we did a good job. We, 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 we controlled a lot of the game. We controlled a lot of the game. I think that was fact. Um, and then we just we, we couldn't make some plays. They got real aggressive offensively in the second half, attacking the basket, very aggressive. Um, and we, we relented a couple times, and then we fouled a couple times also. Uh, and then it got down to, uh, uh, towards the end, to the nitty gritty, and we, and we didn't make any plays. Uh, one guy goes one for four from the free throw line. Uh, we miss a little runner in there. We miss another layup in transition. We have a wide open three that we miss. And so at some point at that stage of the game, a couple of those plays need to be made. You got to make a couple of those plays. And, and um, you know, rotations were a little bit different today. We got, you know, uh, Mo was a little banged up, and so he didn't play today. And just in looking long term for the future, I just thought we were better off just uh, not playing him today. So, John on the right side here. Seemed like midway through the second half when you all built your lead up to about 10 or 11, things just kind of bogged down offensively. All weren't getting many clean looks. What were you seeing offensively about, about that point from the game? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know that, that specific time, but. I know there was a time we we were stagnant offensively. We were stagnant, and then you know we had a couple guys that also didn't didn't miss a shot, didn't make a play, and we couldn't get all over it. Like we couldn't get over it. We were we were processing that internally. You could see it on a couple guys here and there. And so you know you you you're going to miss more than you make. You got to get to the next thing. But we 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 also we just weren't moving as much. We weren't moving. Um, uh, I thought Stephen Clark was a shot in the arm a couple times. They were not guarding him essentially, and then he moved around and found his way into a, a couple good situations and opportunities for us. But I thought we got stagnant. And we settled for some stuff, um, uh, you know. And then the other thing, we gave up 16 second chance points. Is where you're not going to beat a good team when you do that. That's for sure. Andrew in the back left there, coach. Obviously, you like to use your role with a certain group. Where we've got the hot hand late in the game. Saw the key play, Colin Murray Boyles in those late minutes. What did you see from him tonight? Yeah, he was active. He's he's he he'll play physical brand of basketball. The game turned into a physical game. Um, he made some good plays defensively. Uh, uh, again, we we gave up 16 second chance points, so I thought rebounding was a, was something that he could help us with. Um, made a nice block shot. Just sometimes he's the type of athlete that'll just make that can just make a play. Um, so I felt I felt comfortable with him, and and you know what there were a couple other guys that maybe normally would have been in there that didn't play great, and so you're searching to some degree as to who's going to play well in those moments, and uh, and a couple of our usual suspects weren't playing great, and so it made a it made a lot of sense to me to to go with Colin. Matt in the back right. Yeah, coach. Obviously, it's your first road test of the year. The atmosphere pretty tough. Just. Do you take any amount of pride in knowing that your team came in here and competed to the end, or was that something you knew they could do already coming into this? Mm, I don't know. You're trying to win a game. Right? You're, you're trying to win a game, and you were there to win the game. I mean, you were in position to win the game. You did enough things. The, the, the general body of work, how you conducted your business, you, how you competed overall to win the game. You're, you're up at halftime. You're up double figures in the second half. Like you, you did enough to win the game. So that's, if you're thinking about anything other than that, then you're in the wrong profession. So we, we, we will go back to the lab and uh, look at and evaluate some of these things. That's a good team. Like they, they have a good team. I mean, they earned their way into the top 25. They, they, they didn't get there because, you know, somebody said, you know, uh, Brad Brownell's recruiting class was the best ever, and they started. They did. They earned their way into the top 25 by performing, and so they got a good team. And and so we have a good team, and we played relatively well for most of the game, and just weren't able to weren't able to finish it off. Madison in the front here. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on Juan Cooper's performance. I felt like there were moments where he was just kind of everywhere throughout the throughout the court. I was curious if you were seeing something similar, something different. With Um, I, you know, I guess I, I kind of took, took it as Talon was doing Talon type stuff at this point. He's, he's shown the ability to, <clears throat> to be reliable in those situations. And, 
um, you know, in creating stuff and reading stuff and seeing stuff. He was he was cutting. He was active. He was open a couple times under a basket even. But, um, you know, I haven't even looked at – I don't even – you know, I'm not a huge stat guy unless they – unless it, you know, uh, corroborates my narrative usually. But – um, so I haven't really looked at it like that in detail to see even what his stat line was, but I felt comfortable with him. I, I did have a sense of just comfortability while he was in there. Alan, and then Elijah, we'll get Coach out of here. Uh, last seven minutes of the first half, you held Clemson off the scoreboard. What were you guys doing well defensively at that point, and did anything change in the second half, or was just Clemson executing better? We were competing. We were, you know, we, we made some physical plays. We were competing physically. They got the ball and some duck-ins, and we chested up physically without fouling, showing our hands, and we, we had an impact at the rim on their ability to put the ball in. I thought we did a good job of that at that point. And in the second half, they turned up how aggressive they were. They were going, they were just head down to rim. That was what they were doing. And, you know, sometimes that's hard. It's hard, it's hard to officiate that. It's hard to defend that. Sometimes it's hard. And that's what they were doing. They'd be very aggressive. They were being very aggressive. And, um, you know, it was effective, and, uh, and we gave up a couple duck-ins that were way too deep where you have no chance to, to – to, you're just hoping the guy misses. So they were they, they turned up their level of aggression in terms of attacking, and then we made a couple errors defensively. They skipped the ball from one corner to the next. It's about as basic as it gets, and they, they get a three, a wide-open three on that. So um, it was a combination of a lot of things, but, but um, they – they they played better. They played better than us at that time. But I thought we competed better defensively in the first half. Elijah, last question. Yeah, coach got up about 10 points, and then that's when Clemson goes on an 11-0 run. But what kind of lessons can a team like yours um, learn giving up a lead kind of in a, an environment like that where it got pretty hostile at times? Yeah, I just think you're in a learning by doing scenario, right? And you, you, get a, you got a new team, basically. And a lot of teams in college basketball are going through this, having a lot of new faces. And so you're in a learning by doing situation. And so I think you have to be in those situations to perform better in those situations. And, um, you know, your name's going to get called and you got to stand up on a wide open shot is what, you know, and make it or on a, uh, a defensive stop or whatever the case may be. But ultimately, I think you have to, you have to be in those scenarios and then uh, you'll improve your performance as you get more, gain more experience in those situations. It's a hostile environment, good team, well-coached team, physical team, skilled team, good-sized team. And you come in here, and again, you played well for the majority of the game, well enough that you, that you in the back of your mind, feel like you should have won, right? And then, um, and, but you give a good team 16 second-chance opportunities, you're, you, you forfeited your chance pretty much. And then we had a couple of plays, like I said, that we didn't perform. But I think ultimately it's just a, a, a good learning tool if, we, if, we, if it affects our behavior moving forward.